Good morning and welcome to Moments of Encounter. My name is Father Michael Irwin, pastor at St. Catherine Drexel Parish in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, as well as the Tri Parishes in Climate, Reesville, and Elba. Well, I am pastor here for a, another 10 days or so, um, or another week or so. Um, and so it's good for me to be able to pray with you one more time and to be able to especially break open today's scriptures regarding the body and blood of Christ, the Blessed Sacrament which is so important, not just to your average Catholic, but especially the patron of our largest parish here, St. Catherine Drexel. She founded the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. And so during my 11 years of being here, um, I've grown an appreciation of the connection of social change and charity and receiving the Eucharist on a regular basis. So I'm happy to be able to have this as one of my last things to reflect on here with the people of Beaver Dam and the surrounding communities. So let us pray. Loving God, you give us so many good gifts, including this opportunity to pray this morning. Open up our hearts to be able to understand more clearly what it is you're calling us to and drawing us to so that we are able to grow within your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Catherine Drexel was from the middle 1800s. She was born to a very rich family in Philadelphia. uh, And in her family, her mother passed away early, but her father remarried. And the whole family had a sense that they were given a huge gift to be of given to other people. So especially during bad times, they would let people who were in need come up to their giant house and find a way to help them and care for them. And this influenced Catherine Drexel so that when it came time for her as an adult to go out into the world and do something significant, she really wanted to do something very charitable, but yet she felt the obligation of carrying on the family's wealth her father and her stepmother both died pretty early and so she and her two sisters were set up with trust funds each of which was worth in current terms about a hundred million dollars and so she was feeling maybe i should be you know the patroness of this money um, but maybe help fund other people so she went to rome to talk to the pope to say you know i've been looking around the united states And when I look around the United States, I think one of the things we really need to get on top of is to care for African-American and Native American children. So already post-Civil War, um, it was time period of a lot of Western expansion, and there was already a real intention in the U.S. to undereducate African-American and Native American children. And Catherine Drexel thought that the Pope should do something. He should send somebody to go do this. She would help fund it, but could he find somebody? And Pope looked at her and said, why don't you do something about this yourself? And that kind of rattled inside of her soul. And she realized, you know what? It is time for me to get going in life. And instead of getting married, instead of being you know, person of society, she's going to take vows. She's going to become a religious sister and start up a new branch of sisters who take it as their focus to work with Native American and African American children. To the point that she even said, we're not going to work in other traditional schooling settings. Let's stay focused on this work. And it was a long, arduous work um, because a lot of these communities where she went to were resistant to her schools. They kind of liked the status quo of an underclass and 
educated group that would be a steady source of cheap labors. It's an old problem in world history. And so she was insistent. She got in there and she got these schools going. And again, she did a lot of this in the early 1900s. She passed away in about 1955, I do believe. And she never really got into the limelight. She really stayed away from media, even though there was obviously a lot of media around. And other famous Catholics and other famous people were readily known by people. But Catherine Drexel would always kind of stay off to the side. Even when she was uh, helping fund and start Xavier University in New Orleans, she stayed away from the stage and she was up in an um, apartment balcony nearby just simply praying from a distance. And that's why a lot of people didn't know her very much uh, when she eventually passed away. But she was truly a remarkable person and really grew in a lot of holiness. So what's fascinating on this Feast of the Celebration of the Blessed Sacrament to think, wow, why did she choose Blessed Sacrament as her spiritual goal and the spiritual goal of her fellow sisters in this work to be able to do this ministry in a cross-cultural, multicultural way? Well, let's look at our second reading for this today to be able to kind of get at the, a glimpse of this. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats, and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled, so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Such a beautiful reading, talking about reconciliation and healing and building bridges between peoples. And so it's kind of understandable. You see so much coming up in our history about how some of these efforts in our early country history ended up being kind of a negative experience for a whole variety of people because I think groups did not understand each other. And in the misunderstanding each other, I'm sure they mistreated each other. And so... Therefore, this engagement was a very unpleasant experience. So I suppose this reconciliation aspect of the Eucharist was helpful to Catherine Drexel and her sisters to know that just forgiveness is part of it. And hopefully then we can apologize, we can learn, we can change, we can adapt, all because we recognize we probably did it imperfectly. We probably harmed somebody else in the process. And, but there's a solution to that, and that's the gift of the Eucharist for us as Catholics. Is, this is what we understand as being able to go into this gift of this Last Supper that Jesus commissioned right before his death, when so many people were going to abandon him, so many people were going to attack him. And he sent this gift, this meal, to be able to consume so that we can consume forgiveness. And pretty much we need that. Uh, God sat up in heaven for a long time watching us human beings doing our best. And eventually when he sent his son, he came to realize he's got to focus us on forgiveness. Because that's going to allow us to admit what we're good at and we're not so good at in order for us to make the rest of the progress we need to make. And so what an honor it is to be able to pray again this weekend and to consider from this point of view. Our country has a lot of conflict these days, um, but some of that is built within a lack of reflection. 
It's almost like we want to say, no, I'm right, therefore you must be wrong. As opposed to having a bit more humility um, on all sides to be able to say, well, I've got some things I need to contribute to the world or some things I need to say. However, I always need to maintain some level of humility. And to consume this Eucharist means I am loved. I'm loved for exactly who I am, the good and the bad. And therefore, I can be honest about the bad, knowing that I can receive forgiveness for that bad and maybe get better. That's the only way to do it. I know for myself as pastor here at St. Catherine Drexel and the Tri Parishes, I had many challenging decisions to make, many challenging things to do in order to bring in Beaver Dam these three sites onto one site, have major three construction projects, and be a find a way to pay for it all. I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes, and I, you know, stay up at night, you know, feeling badly for the people I may have been harsh with or the people that I wouldn't have taken it seriously enough, or the people I didn't focus on while I was trying to focus on these other things, and they may have felt pretty abandoned. I feel really badly about these things, but that's okay, um, because the gift of forgiveness is being offered to myself. And hopefully that's an encouragement to yourself as well, to say, okay, I offered a lot here, but what did I mess up? What did I not do as good? even under important circumstances. So a lot of people listening into this radio program this morning are parents. Very huge responsibility, but they may be watching a graduation, are very grateful for their child, very grateful for most of what happened over the years, but even in that moment feel a twinge of sadness that they weren't better at what they did as a parent or the moments that they were not entirely loving. It's okay to be in that moment. It's okay to accept that part of yourself that's incomplete, imperfect, and may have even harmed somebody else and ask for God's forgiveness. And the reverse would be said for those same graduates to be able to say, you know what, I wish I would have been maybe better with my teachers. Maybe if I focused a little bit more within my studies, I'd have more options before me. Maybe if I was a little better with my friends, um, they wouldn't be looking at me um, as somebody we never want to see again. You know, it could be a lot of things that people are sad about that they wish they didn't do. But they know with the grace of Jesus Christ, with his forgiveness, we can keep going. And we can learn from his charity how to be more charitable to others. And so let us pray. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit upon your world and upon your church. Help us to use this profound, complete gift of love, which is the Eucharist, to be able to be honest with ourselves and accept the gift of forgiveness and pass on the gift of forgiveness to others so that we can use that as an entry point to making social change and allow ourselves to keep growing as a people. May you bless us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. May God bless you all. Again, next weekend, June 12th and 13th, is my last weekend at St. Catherine Drexel. You're welcome to come for Masses. It's the one-year anniversary of the dedication of our church. If you want to say hi to me and come visit after Masses and whatever, that sounds great. And then take a tour around the church. We'll have tours as well. But may God bless you and keep you until then. Again, this is Father Mike from St. Catherine Drexel and Beaver Dam and the Tri-Parishes of Southwest Dodge County.